Okay, today we're going to be looking at compatible numbers, which is just another way of rounding, but it's where you're going to want to be as close as you possibly can get to that answer. So let's look at some of these. Okay, so let's look at this one. First of all, the word about is a key word that tells you to estimate instead of working the exact problem. I've talked about those before, so estimate, about, reasonable, rounding. They all mean to find a number that's close to, but not at the exact answer. So let's do this question together. So it says a store needs to take in at least 15000 in sales per month to make a profit. If the store is open every day in March and takes in an average of $525 per day, will the store make a profit in March? Okay, so I'm going to mark my information. It's at least $15,000, and it takes in, in March, $525 per day. So I want to know, the question is asking, will I have, make a profit? Okay, so then you think about, so I've got $525, and I want to, it's every day for 31 days, if that's how many days there are in March. So remember, I want to know about, so I don't want to know exactly. So you want to take and look at this. And so this is what you, because you want to make it to where your answer is going to be as close as you can as you could get to it, but still make it a rounded about number. So 525 is almost 500. And 31 is, uh, is close to 30. You go to 500 and to 30 because it's easy to do, our, we know our facts of 5 times 3, which is 15. And then we know that anything times 0 is always 0. So we're going to have Remember how many zeros there are on the question? That's how many zeros are going to be in my answer. So the answer is yes. They'll make about $15,000 in the month of March. So they would make a profit. Okay, so let's look at this one. So if it's 118 times 3, so let's see. If we were to just round it, just rounding regularly, regularly then you would probably take 118 as close to 100. And then it's we would just leave your 3. This makes the fact that we know. So 100 times 3 equals 300. Let's see how it makes rounding with compatible numbers is a little bit different. Because you remember, you want to try and make it as close as you can, but still using facts that you already know the multiplication fact for. So we would leave 3. And if you look at it, so 118, well, 118 is really close to 120. And we know our facts of 3, so 3 times 12 we know is 36. 36, sorry, finger slipped on there. And then there's anything times 0 is 0. I've got 1 0 in my question. I have 1 0 in my answer. So I have 360. So if we were to go and look at it, let's see which one of those would be a more, would be closer to the exact answer choice. Because remember, that's what we're trying to get, is to be as close as you can so that it's a pretty good estimate. So 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. And then 3 times 1 is 3. So if you see, the compatible number, using the compatible number method, does give you an answer that is much closer than the exact. Okay, so let's look at another one. You have 286 times 9. We know our multiples of 9, so we're going to leave our, leave our times 9. And then 286, remember you're trying to take it to a... a Factor to where that factor times nine is a mul is one of the one of your multiples that we know. So I'm going to take it to 300 because I know what three times nine is. So three times nine is 27. And then remember the power of 10. I've got two zeros on the question. You have to do two zeros on my answer. So my using compatible estimation, it is 2,700. But the actual answer is 2,574. So that is pretty darn close to it, okay? Let's do another example. All right, let's look at this one. 11 times 83. This is one that you might find a different, couple different answer choices. So I would use compatible numbers. So if you take it and if you were to leave 11 as an 11, because I know my multiples of 11, and then times 80, I'm going to take the 83 down to 80, so again, you know 8 times 11 is 88. I have one zero in my question. So anytime I multiply by zero, I'm going to have another zero. So that would be 880. That's correct. You also could have taken, if I still had the same problem, so I have 11 times 83. If I took 11 to 10, 
times and I took the 83 to 80. Okay, so I take this one and I get 1 times 8 is 8. I've got two zeros in my questions. Remember, any time I times zero, I have zero, so that would be 800. All right. I also could have taken it, if I would have taken it, the 11 down to 10, and then I said, oh, well, anything times 1 is that other thing, or that other digit, the other number, so I'm going to take 1 times 83 is 83, and then I have, again, anything times 0 is going to give me a 0, so I have 1 zero, so 830. All of these are correct. So if you take it and you want to think about, though, just, just out of curiosity, the one that would be the closest would be the one that you rounded the least amount on. So if you look at the first, if you look at the first one, I rounded, moved, I changed this number 11, not at all, but I took 80 down to 83 down to 80. Here I took the 11 down and I took the 80 down, and then here I took the 10 down, I mean 11 down, but I did not take down the 83. So you look at these, and the actual answer is 913. So this would be the most accurate. But any of these three answers would be correct because it makes facts that we should know easily in our head and then, of course, using those tens, thinking about those groups of tens and how that fits that zero there. Okay, let's look at this one together. So it says a factory makes 585 rubber bands every hour. About how many rubber bands will the factory make in six hours? So I've got 585 rubber bands every hour. And I want to know how many in six hours. Okay, so remember you're going to leave the six the same. And then I want to take 585 to a fact that's easy. So I'm going to take that to 600. And then six times six I know is 36. And then I've got two zeros. So anything times zero is going to give me a zero. So I'm going to have at least two zeros in my answer. So the answer is 3,600. Okay, let's do one more. So it says the law form, form, I'm sorry, the law firm ordered 32 boxes of paper clips. There were 47 paper clips in each box. About how many paper clips did the law firm order in all? Okay, so I've got the law firm ordered 32 boxes of paper clips. So 32 boxes. There were 47 paper clips in each box, so about paper clips. All right, in all. So then again, if you want to take your two numbers, I've got 32 times 47. So you want to stop and look at it. Remember, you want to, it wants to round the least amount as you can. So the guess, even though taking 47 to 40 would be a fact that I know, but it would be taking it a whole lot further than it could take it just up to 50, would only be moving up 3, and it's still a fact that you know. So we'll do 32 goes to 30, and then 47 we're going to take to 50. So then again, 3 times 5 is 15. I've got two zeros in my question, so I'm going to have at least two zeros in my answer, because that's zero property. So I'm going to have 1,500 or 1,500 paper clips in all. Okay? Okay, guys, so that's it for compatible numbers. So go ahead and bring in a summary of the video and a question that, remember, that you could ask if you didn't quite understand or a question that would be a good question to um, check to see, check your knowledge on compatible numbers. And we'll be doing some practice at class tomorrow.